Hey everyone, welcome to episode 25 of Pineapple Knits. I'm Marina and you can visit me on Instagram and Ravelry at Pineapple Yarn and you can visit my hand-dyed yarn company at pineappleyarn.com. Welcome to the podcast this week. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm so excited to be here with you and talk about knitting and yarn and yes I actually have some spinning today so I was really good and I got on my wheel this weekend so I'm excited to show you that and if you are a new viewer thanks so much for joining me this week my family and I live in central Indiana we moved here about a year and a half ago from Hawaii and that is where I gather a lot of my inspiration for my yarn and my knitting and I just like bright colors in general. So if you like bright colors, you like knitting, then you are in the right place. It has been great weather. I always talk about the weather at the beginning. <laughs> I'm turning into my grandmother, but uh, I, love, um, I love this time of year. It's just so beautiful and sunny. And I do have to say though, I checked the weather this morning and there were some snowflakes. Yes, there were some snowflake emoji symbols on my weather on my iPhone this morning. So I think that that is going to be Friday and then next Tuesday and Wednesday. So I don't, I don't really know what to say about that. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the snow or the cold really. So my kids are kind of out of their minds. They love the snow and they cannot wait. They can't wait. So um, I guess I just need to knit faster and more for everybody so we don't freeze. <laughs> but enough about the weather. Let's talk about my finished object today, which is my throwback. Yay! I have been working on this for a long time, you guys. And it is finished. This is The Throwback by Andrea Mowry. Um, the biggest thing about this is that I actually knit it in the round and then I steaked it. So I'm just gonna stand up and I'll show you the whole thing. The whole, I'll do the whole twirl around. So I steaked it. And if you're on Instagram, if you go to my account, Pineapple Yarn, you'll see I actually put a video of when I actually steaked it. So, that was interesting, <laughs> sticking on video, but this has a really comfortable shape. I'm really happy about it. It, um, oh, it just fits really well. I didn't add any buttons to it or anything. Um, through the shoulders fits great. Through like the arms, it's really nice. It's I don't feel like it's too big. I'm actually pretty petite, so some patterns, some popular patterns, I have not knit because the yokes are really deep and I think they're supposed to be kind of like slouchy over size sweaters. I just don't think they'd work for my body type though, unfortunately. But anyway, back to the sweater. This is um, a color work pattern. I knit it in the round instead of knitting and then purling and it worked awesome. I was so excited to find a different way to do that and just that it worked out. It was my first time steaking and I was really, really happy with the results of that. So I will definitely consider that in the future if I um, want to do a color work cardigan because it was so much more simple. Um, not gonna lie though, it was pretty nerve-wracking steaking because Oh gosh, all that work, all that hard work. I just, I thought, okay, if things go wrong, I could run up to my sewing machine and put some stitches in. <laughs> or I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. But so far, it's held up really well. Let me just go from the yarns and through the process of the sweater. So I'm, I'm going all over the place right now. But so basically, um, this main color, the purple, Blue purple color is pineapple yarn in profound. The light gray color is pineapple yarn glint of dawn. The orange is a single ply uh, Malabrigo um, yarn called uh, glazed carrot. The colorway is glazed carrot. And then the um, kind of like pinky purple color is pineapple yarn in heliotrope. And it is actually a sport weight, non superwash uh, merino wool held double. 
So I have all kinds of stuff going on in this color work and I, I liked these colors together even though they were all different bases and different weights and I just decided to go for it. Um, I don't know, you know, in I like the way it works on this sweater. I could possibly do it again in the future. Um, it's not perfect. And I think that it would have worked better if I would have used all the same bases or all the same weights. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. So can't complain about that. <laughs> and let's see, I guess um, the only other modification I did is Steaks It, obviously. But um, I did crochet columns at you can see in the heliotrope color Let's see if i can show you down here so all this was the the um, stabilizing row and like i said last week i used a tutorial from tin can knits it's just called steak if you google it you'll find it and um yeah i did this so the video would actually be a little bit easier to see I probably would not do a contrasting color normally only because, I mean, it does look pretty cool on the inside, but I probably wouldn't do it only because if you have, you know, a bit of a loose stitch or something, you'll see that underneath or on the right side, you'll see that underneath. So I probably wouldn't do that normally, but um, then I just tacked it down. I actually did the button bands before I steaked it. So I knit the button bands then I cut it and then I tacked it down. Um, I have not blocked it yet. I have blocked the sweater, the main body of the sweater, but I have not blocked all of this collar part. You can see this is an add-on at the very end. And then I have not um, blocked the button bands. So you know what though, I'll get there. I just want to wear it and I wanted to show you guys because I was really proud that I finally finished it. But, um, oh, one more modification is the um, the cuffs. I actually did not make as deep because, um, like I said, I am petite and I need to lengthen my limbs and not have them kind of visually cut off with uh, chunky cuffs. But. All in all, this is a great pattern, you guys. And if you have not done color work before, or if you just want a really fun, kind of a quick sweater, this is a worsted weight, so it is a really, you know, relatively quick knit um, for a garment anyway. And if you've never done color work, this is great. Simple, the, the color work um, chart is very simple. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy with it and I was glad that I knit it. I love, love the colors. I feel like they match so many things that I wear normally and um, this um, color, Profound, I have wanted to dye for a really long time. I, I kind of was tweaking the recipe for quite a while, finally got it and couldn't be happier with it. So this is also the same color that I knit my hipster shawl from. So you guys know how obsessed I have been with this color. But um, yeah, I was really excited about it. But let me show you my next project that I've been working on. I mentioned last week that I have been working on a pair of socks for my five-year-old daughter and she was next in line for socks. <laughs> so um, I actually finished the main part of the socks and I just really need to do the heel. So here they are. This is um, just a vanilla sock pattern. Nothing earth shattering for sure. And um, the main part of the yarn, it's a self-striping yarn. The main part of the yarn is called Neon Flamingo and it is by the yarn jar. This is how much I have left. I have a lot left which is great. And um, the toes and cuffs, I found a very similar color in my stash, kind of like a minty green color. I think this is similar to my bright mint color. And um, yeah, the stripes are a little more 
blue in person, but they look awesome. The, the toes and the cuffs look great with this. So I will also make the heels um, contrasting. And the reason I haven't finished these is because I mostly always knit only at night. Um, I do knit here and there during the day a little bit. I just don't have enough time to sit down and knit. So, um, yeah, and when I do have time, I'm always holding a baby or chasing after someone. So I guess I do have times, but my hands are full. That's basically what it is. So I need to grab my daughter this afternoon before any kind of knitting goes on, and I need to measure her feet um, so I can get these finished up, throw a heel in, because I know what this what will happen is these will just get buried in the bottom of my knitting bag and my project bag, and I'll totally forget about them and not want to put a heel in because I'll feel like, ooh, on to the next shiny project, right? <laughs> So these were really, really fun. And um, I think, they, I don't know if I just said this last week, but they're actually sparkle. And they have a silver, um, they have silver Selena in it. And so you can see maybe on the black stripes. Oh, they're so cute. She is just gonna love these. We, What we actually did is went to, um, we were just browsing Etsy actually one day, she and I were. And I thought, you know what, it would be really fun for you to choose a yarn for your socks. So I let her pick and we ended up um, getting to the Yarn Jars website and, um, and to her Etsy shop. And my daughter saw this colorway and just went crazy. So I think, I don't know if all of her colorways are, are like this, but this colorway we um, custom ordered and it took about six weeks, I wanna say. So this was fun. I'm glad to have these finished up. And, um, you know, while I'm sticking heels in, I actually have, I just remembered, I have one or two pairs of socks that I gift knitted. And I showed you guys on the, on previous podcasts. And so I need to get those going. I should just stick heels in all of them all at once. <laughs> oh, anyway. So there's that. Um, I've also been working on my Advent socks, and that is with the um, 2018 Advent Calendar exclusive colorway that some of you ordered with your Advent calendars. So I don't want to show that yet. That was actually um, meant to be open on the 25th of December. So I don't want to spoil any surprises, but maybe I'll show you around Christmas or after. I mean, if it was me and I had an advent calendar, I would probably open up that skein right now and start knitting on it, just so I had some Christmas socks to wear. That's just me, but I would have a really hard time if I had an advent calendar, just having it sit there and waiting for a month <laughs> before I could use it too. That would be so hard. So yeah, that is really all I'm working on now. I think that, um, this next week, I am going to be start on some, like really start on some gift knitting. So I am going to be doing some hats. I'm going to be starting on some, maybe some fingerless mitts. Those two things are kind of on my mind. I've been on this fingerless mitt kick for a while. I've purchased a couple of patterns. Um, so I need to get those done and like really figure out who needs what and start knitting, start knitting some quick knits, quick gift knits, which are some of my favorite. Um, I actually did just dye up another colorway for my son. He needs a sweater. He grew out of his other colorwork sweater I knit him. So I will show that next week on the podcast, actually, because the yarn's still drying. It's a really beautiful color. And um, yeah, I purchased a really cute, it's just a v-neck sweater pattern. It's so cute. But I'll show you guys that next week. Um, right now, what I want to show you is something that I worked on on my spinning wheel this week. This is what I spun up this weekend. It is, um, I actually made Rolex from this, and it is a Cheviot wool, just in, the, in a natural color, and then it actually has some bits of um, sari silk roving in it. And I received these two items from my Paradise Fibers, Fiber of the Month Club box, maybe in 
September. I believe that was September's box. Um, I received four different colors of Sari Silk Roving, which is stunning. It's so beautiful. And I watched a little video from Paradise Fibers about how to make a tweed yarn. <laughs> well, that's what kind of what I meant to do, but I put so much Sari Silk into this. It didn't really turn out very tweedy. It just kind of turned out this really fun, I guess it is a bit tweedy. It just wasn't what I was thinking of. And I, I don't know if it's because I haven't knit for a while, or sorry, I haven't spun for a while. I found this very hard to spin from a Rolag. It could be because the Cheviot fibers are a little bit on the long side, and so maybe a Rolag wasn't the best fiber prep. I'm saying all this with question marks, question marks, because I am a new spinner. I don't really know exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> you know, I've spun a lot, but um, anyway, my, what I envisioned is I wanted to do, I wanted this to turn into a single ply, um, more of like a chunky, bulky weight to knit a hat from. And I don't know if I have enough to knit a hat in hindsight because this is only 50 grams, 54 grams maybe. Um, I really don't know if this is enough to be a hat, an adult sized hat. So yeah, I'm not really sure where I'm gonna go with this. I could definitely knit maybe a kid's hat from it. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to take one of these palms and kind of use it with that. And I don't know if that is the best one. I've got a couple back here. That one looks a little yellow for this. I've got this one. I think this one is kind of nice. These are all faux fur palms. I purchased the palms from um, Trappings and Trinkets and I purchased them way back in May. So um, I still I still have not used them. <laughs> oh, story of my life. But I had a really good time with this. It was challenging and I was trying to spin it woolen so it would just be really lofty and airy and just a little more rustic and it's definitely rustic. Definitely got that down, but um yeah. I'll show you if I I will knit it up. I'm just not sold on this. But oh well. I think it'd make a cute hat. It might end up being a hat for a kid. But I was glad to get my spinning wheel out and work on that. And um, yeah, I'm gonna have to keep it up and do it a little more, a little more often just because um, I really need to practice more on it, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah, let me show you some things that will be in the shop on Friday. I do have a shop update and it will be this Friday, November 9th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And I don't have a ton in the shop this week because I worked on my advent calendars. And so I just haven't had a lot of time to dye up a lot of yarn. But I will have a couple of kits and some new Christmas yarn. So I want to show you the Christmas yarn that I will be adding to the shop. This is a new color. I'm going to call it Melikilikimaka, which is Merry Christmas in Hawaiian. I mean, we'll just say loosely. <laughs> but um, this is it. I wanted to make a really, really bright, colorful holiday Christmas yarn. And I think I nailed it because it is so pretty. It is a blend of blues, teals, purple pinks. I've got some neon green here. And then of course it's speckled, highly, highly speckled. And I think it turned out so beautiful. I really, really love this colorway. I have dyed this particular skein on Sparkle 
It's a gold Stellina base. And I prefer sparkle. I don't know about you guys, but I love a good sparkle yarn. And so I will definitely have this on sparkle. I will have it on my basic Lonnie sock base, it's 7525 uh, base. I also dyed it on DK and my Nui Bulky, uh, which is a single ply bulky. And I am seriously thinking of snagging a skein of it to make into a hat. So um, if I do, I'll show you guys. <laughs> But yeah, this is going to be a new Christmas colorway, Meleke Likimaka, and I think it looks so much like Hawaii, uh, Christmas in Hawaii. It's just so bright, colorful, sunny. It has a little bits of, I guess, traditional Christmas colors in it. You know, you've got your red, you've got kind of your neon green. Well, that's not traditional, but you know what I mean. So that will be in the shop on Friday. And then I will also be putting a special Christmas kit in the shop. And um, I haven't done a kit in a while. The advent calendars, I think, were really taking up a lot of my time. But I acquired some Hawaiian Christmas fabric. And I couldn't help but do some kits with it. So here is the fabric, which cracks me up it just I don't know what it is about this fabric it just makes me laugh like what is this is Santa he's just chilling on the, the surfboard we've got him on a sleigh right here on the sand which is so funny and then this I love this he's in an outrigger canoe and I want to show you this one too this is so funny here he is, just chilling on the beach, playing his ukulele. I think this fabric is so great. I really, really loved it. And then of course I wanted to dye up a matching skein of yarn. And so I dyed up this, which I did show on my Instagram when it was taking a bath. And this is just a really beautiful blend of greens we've got some like pinky reds turquoise lots of really pretty kind of uh some earthy green speckles in there and then on this end we have some really nice kind of kind of looks like a sandy like a warm sandy color so i love this yarn so much. And I actually did write the formula to this down because I just couldn't help it. I loved it so much and I didn't want it to be one of a kind. I wanted the ability to dye it again later if I wanted to. So yeah, that will be the kits. And those will be available this Friday. I will not be putting any progress keepers in there. Just couldn't find one that I thought matched the theme. And so that's okay. It will just be the project bag. As always, my project bags always have little pineapple um, charms attached to the zippers. And it will also include this yarn. And you'll have your choice of either the, um, the yarn on a gold sparkle base, which is my gold Lonnie base. And that's what this is on. It's so pretty. I love it. And then you will also have the option of purchasing it on my Lani sock base, my standard sock base. So these two will definitely be in the shop. And I don't know if I will have a chance to dye anything else up this week. I may, I may have another, a few other things popped in there. Um, but these will be the two main, um, the main yarns. And... Yeah, so if you're interested, pop over to pineappleyarn.com, check it out on Friday evening. And um, I did want to point out something with my website. I have really been working on improving the site, making it a lot more user-friendly, and I think it's just one of those things where it's going to be a work in prog pro progress. Work in progress. <sighs> like my speech. <laughs> but... Um, 
yeah, so I popped on there this weekend and I did tons of little fixes to it um, just to make it a little easier to shop. I have started to rearrange all of my products in color order. So it's very pleasing to look at. It hopefully will be a little easier to navigate. Um, I do plan during my shop updates to have all of my new items at the beginnings of my categories. So if you are looking for the new products, the new colorways, I am hoping that I will be able to put all of the new items at the beginnings of the pages. You don't have to search for them. And I think that'll be a little easier for you guys to navigate. Um, I'm trying to think what other little tweaks I made. I do have a shop by yarn base on the site, so if you're looking for a specific weight of yarn, you can see what is available in the colorways. And then I also just split it into tonal yarn and speckled yarn. So you can go, if you click shop, and um, it will drop down, you can see all yarn, you can see speckled yarn, which is some of my variegated colorways, like this would be a speckled yarn. There is just tonal yarn, so more of like my semi-solid like these would be on there. And um, so yeah, it just makes it a little easier for you guys to find what you're looking for because I do have quite a bit of yarn in the shop. I like to have yarn in stock because nothing's more frustrating than going to shop in a store, in a shop and it's all empty, which it's a kind of a great problem to have, but kind of frustrating as a buyer as well. So um, yeah, just some little tweaks to make shopping a little easier. So I hope to see you at the shop update this week and I hope to see you next week during the podcast. Hopefully I'll have a lot more goodies knit up to show you. And um, I always enjoy chatting with you. I always value the time that you spend watching my podcast. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps push the podcast out to other viewers who would like to see it. And until next time, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.